sending in. Oh, he is going to help. He's going to help, but this guy's probably also going to run away. <laughs> Unless he wins. Yeah, now you're dead. <laughs> well, that That is like movie quality stuff. Iggy on the Ascendancy? Yeah, I do believe he is. I really do believe he is. Uh, Boja does not really have the stability to raise up these 200,000 men as he had before. Uh, he does have a chunk of cash, though, and that could have been from a gift from the gods or one of the other events that you would get when you're out of money. But he's continually losing ships. I wonder, is he building new ones? It looks like it. He's just continually feeding ships into this this naval blockade of Paliputra, and it's not enough. It's really not enough. Um, while it was sieged, it was losing food. That's why it lost all of its food, but now, now it's got positive growth. Can't raise during war. That is very true. I completely forgot about that. Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I don't think Boja's got it in him. Uh, he's still got more manpower. That is beyond a shadow of a doubt he's got the manpower and if he can make use of that if he knows that fact then he can he can obviously do a lot um but it's it's pretty good it's pretty damn it's pretty good freaky he's doing all right i'd love to see it I'd love to see it uh looking at alexandra limen uh it looks like they beat a shulian army uh or at least it was retreating but it retreated in a very strange way uh, it could be that a small army went into Alexandru Limon. Maybe it was a large one, because there is quite a few, uh, quite a bit of morale missing from that uh, that army there. Uh, but I think there is an army right here from Shul. Let's have a look. There is an army right here as well that had retreated and now coming back. Um, 46,000 men here, lowered morale. Yeah, we definitely missed a big battle, which is unfortunate. Um, we'll come back to them. We'll come back to them. Let's look at uh, Babylon again. 150,000 with very little morale. Oh, and there's 150,000 with equally little morale. This is going to be who breaks first. Um, oh, no. Oh, no. Whoa. You went in too quickly. And now you're fighting on bad terrain. You do have the tactical advantage. Sorry, you do have the martial advantage. You do not have the numbers, although that will change as soon as Parthia gets involved. Um, and morale is certainly not on your side. It's like starting a battle with, you know, your eye poked out. Terrible analogy, but, you know, we'll just go with it. When this 70,000 gets in, I'm expecting the morale to jump. Yes, and it did, but not as much as I was expecting, honestly. But they are losing way more men. The Babylonians seem to have uh, really stumbled here. They've pushed through into three of these forts, but it's plains, plains. This forest is quite important, though. He's managed that far, but getting further into these forests has been really, really difficult for him. Uh, they're now equal on tactics, uh, and now they're not again. The, uh, the tactic is with the now numerically superior... Babylonians, and this guy is probably just going to sit back and wait for a tactical change. Um, the Kush army is retreating. He's going to get back in there again. But this level 15 is coming in to change the tactic once again. This guy is going to change it back again, but it doesn't matter. It's too late. Uh, a really large, but a relatively equal number of losses, honestly. 300,000 uh, at a certain point, was involved for Babylon. Only 190,000 for, uh, for the other side. However, yet again, people are making the mistake of retreating just a single tile, and this army is going to get attacked. You should never retreat just a single tile. It's a very, very silly idea. Uh, as we can see right here, uh, another battle that really Kush does not want to be a part of. He didn't make the same mistake twice, though. He has retreated a lot further this time, I hope. Let's have a look at Pasuria. Uh, they're using their numbers now. They have pushed through, and they don't look like they're going to be stopped. They have a lot of reinforcements back here. Thrace, what have you got left in the tank? 
Uh, this 6.7k is supposed to be 14. That's actually not that impressive. Uh, you got one large army of 54k. This guy over here with 30k is still around. Um, he does have the the uh, provincial capital as well, so he's not going to starve. Oh, big battle. Hello there. Do you like me some big battles? Lots of casualties on each side. A thousand men dying every single day. Beautiful. But Pissuria has the advantage that they can just keep throwing more and more men into the meat grinder. Equal losses is a loss for the Greeks. They cannot sustain this. They do not have the manpower pools for this. Um, these losses for Pissuria is like water off a duck's back. It means very, very little to him because it's just the mass amounts of manpower that this guy uh, possesses. But that's not the case for the Greeks. It really, really isn't. Uh, there are more troops coming in. Iberia is on his way to help. He's going to be able to do nothing with regards to the tactics because he doesn't have the level 12. Um, but it doesn't matter. He did, even without the tactic, they are killing more of the army that really should be winning. There's heavy infantry versus light infantry. And those light infantry, I'm going to be honest, is really should not be punching this far above their weight. It might just be that these horse archers are, are pulling it uh, so far in their favor that it doesn't matter. But still, this is not good. You are losing more men than your opponent when you have the tactic. When you have less uh, manpower, this is not good. This is not good. It should have staggered the men better to avoid morale damage. Yeah, he should have. But he's not. Pasiri is not really in trouble when it comes to morale, let's put it that way. He's not in trouble when it comes to anything. Uh, this mercenary unit has been completely shattered. He's been fired, basically. Um, but it doesn't matter. doesn't matter about the morale for Pressuria. He's doing the job he needs to. 3d1 kills. Uh, and Thrace has had enough. Mag uh, Makadon will stick in for another couple of days, but he also retreats. That is another very, very solid victory for Pressuria, who seems to be fighting these guys completely solo and is utterly fine with it. Now, Babylon moving forward, moving on. Uh, they still have a massive manpower pool as well. Egypt, what's your manpower like? Less good, but still solid. Uh, Kush, uh, tapped. Kush is tapped. That's not good for you, son. Is there any battles or wars over here that we should look at? Uh, is there any names that I haven't really looked at yet? Nope, I think we're good. Let's go back to Alexandru Limon. Is your capital under siege? No, it isn't, but there is a battle there. And it looks like the Battle of Alexandru Limen is not going to go Limen's way. It is going to go the way of Shul and Escate. So we'll keep an eye on this. Uh, yes, the, the numbers advantage is with Shul, or I guess Escate. Uh, the tactical advantage is with Escate. The martial advantage is with Escate. And Escate quite rightly takes the field, killing 27,000 men. They lost more. But let's be fair, when you've got this amount of men advantage, losing only 1,000 men more, it's not really an issue, really, is it? Let's have a look at the Marians. Uh, they have not really made much of an advance since the last time we looked, uh, though they did take uh, Kitagiri, and now they're going after Sringvera, and also this lovely forest fort. Uh, so it's very good that if they get this. That's a, a really very good uh, defensible position for them. And Boja, what have you got left in the tank, man? Um, still plenty of manpower. That cannot be denied. It is very, very important. But losing 144 ducats every single month. That's not good. That's not good. That's going to lead you to losing mass amounts of stability, mass amounts of loyalty. Um, or you could get lucky and just get a gift of the gods every single time. That that would be incredibly lucky, and that's not going to happen, I hope. Uh, but what it does look like is Boja has abandoned the occupations of uh, Marian coastlines. So, Maria, what are you doing about this? Are you building ships? No. Economically, much better situation. Manpower-wise, not a very good situation. What Mauria wants to do is siege. You lose no manpower when you're sieging if you have uh, food. So what he wants to do is just 
siege. What Boja should be doing is attacking at every single opportunity. And yeah, look, he's needing to abandon the siege because he's losing food and food is manpower. That is so important to keep that resource alive. And uh, yeah, if you're going to start losing food, it is not worth continuing the siege. You retreat, you come back later. If this siege falls, then they'll be able to move on to this here, which has actually got no fort. And this is the provincial capital. If you take this, the food of the province is yours. Um, so that's incredibly, incredibly important to have. And uh, he doesn't have it yet, but he does have the uh, the jungle fort. And now he's moving on to the hill fort, another very important defensible location. This army is stocked to the brim with food. He's got enough supply trains and archers don't really use that much food. He's going to be just fine. Boja, your job is to attack. Attack even if you lose. Do as much damage to to their manpower as possible, because that's your only that's your only way forward of winning. Uh, what we do see though is is Boja going to save his ally instead. Now that is very interesting because if if Boja loses, if Boja loses this battle, it is all over. Because he might not get back across the strait. Although I did think that this was a uh, Alexandru Escate fleet. I don't know why I thought that. That's actually impossible. Never mind. He's going to be fine. But he is going to have to cross over the strait here. He's got a worse general. He's going to hope to have the tactical advantage. Oh, the battle has started. He's definitely doing more casualties. 60,000 are coming in to reinforce. But you have to think... Those elephants on the front line are incredibly potent. Another 48,000 men are coming in as reinforcements. This 60,000 is going to want to get involved as soon as possible. As soon as possible, because if they don't, uh, then all of the effort of, of sieging Limen is going to be wasted. Uh, mass amounts of troops coming in now. We have... Uh, those are all regulars. There are no, no mercenaries there that I saw. Um, we're going to have to check on that in a moment. But yeah, it does look like they're holding their own, though. They've got reinforcements, uh, but I don't think 32,000 is enough reinforcements to hold off this. If for, if for any reason uh, Alexandre Escate or Shul had naval supremacy, or maybe even they get super unlucky and a pirate fleet happens to wander down this river at the moment when Boja tries to retreat if they lose Boja would again be stack wiped it is very very dangerous to try and cross a strait into a battle you only want to do that if you are absolutely certain of victory and right now I am not certain that Boja is going to win this it could be that this guy just runs out of reserves. Uh, he's got 10 cohorts there. He's got 19 extra cohorts there. Um, no spares there. None spare there. Um, whereas for you, there is 49 spare cohorts. I think unless the morale breaks for Boja, they have won this battle. I don't think that these guys have the reserves needed. One cohort reserve, six cohorts reserve. Uh, two cohorts reserve. As soon as these reserves are out, it's over. Will they break the morale before that happens? And yes, I know he controls both sides. No, 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 he does not. He does not control both sides. Uh, Alexandre Limon is controlled by uh, Escate. So he does not control both sides. And Boja is actually the one that loses. I thought they had more reinforcements than that, but that is not true. And yeah, if they had a boat right here, right now, in this very instant, this army would be dead. All of it. All of it gone. Just just completely dead and stack wiped and shit. Uh, but that's not the case. And Boja seems to have learned his lesson as well. He's actually retreating a fair distance. Congratulations, you've learned. Very good. Also, um... This totally shouldn't be the case. Are you spending money on this army? That's what I want to see. Where do you see? There we go. 
yeah, he's he's definitely spending money, so that is actually fine. As long as he can't ignore um, movement of uh, of armies, uh, you know, military access, totally fine with it. Right, they now have the provincial capital in Pregea, so these two forts can be sieged by armies without any uh, supply trains. Very nice. Too many units at once, it's bad for morale. Very, very true. Oh, and there is more problems for Shu uh, Limen. He's got some rebels popping up. Uh, it looks like Limen is having another pop. This will not go well. He's outnumbered. He has a much, much inferior army. Um, it looks like they've probably bought these mercenaries, I imagine. And he's going to switch over the owner of the mercenaries very soon, is what I would expect. Maybe not. Maybe they haven't tried to bribe the mercenaries. Ah oh, well. <laughs> Whatever. So, Boja, that was a failed venture on your part, and during that failed venture, the Marians have managed to push very much further in and regained a, not a decent chunk, but a chunk of manpower. A relatively average chunk of manpower has been regained. And he's pushing. He's really pushing. Uh, Mari is actually winning this war. Unfortunately, with it being a naval supremacy war, the amount of land you can actually take in it uh, is it's, it's stupidly small. He's not going to gain a whole lot of uh, territory in this war. Um, he might be able to take one, two, I think, at a maximum. Um, but he's never going to be able to enforce it, I don't think. There is too much Boja to siege and uh, not enough time. So, back to Babylon. Are we going to miss battle? No, we're not. But there are quite a few troops moving into position. I think we might be seeing something. I think we might be seeing something. Uh, we actually don't see anything from the Antigonids. They seem to have completely given up. They're done for. Uh, Gera is here. They're moving south. I don't think Gera is a player today. Let me check. They are not. Okay. But yeah, this has been a, a war that has gone on for quite some time now. Uh, 16 years. 17 years, in fact. And really, the, the war score is very, very minor. Um, it's 25 war score for Babylon before, because they own North Phoenicia. But Battles, they're losing. Badly losing. Uh, occupations, uh, I'd say it is definitely in the Babylonian favor, but nowhere near enough to uh, to cover the cost of those battles that they've really... What we've seen, they've been winning, but I guess uh, in total, losing badly. All right. Limen, are you attempting another attack? Uh, yes, you are. How many mercenaries do you have, Limen? Uh, employed. Limen has one. Uh, there's four for Egypt. Five for Egypt. I don't think that's legit, honestly. I'm going to have to go and check on that. Uh, there's another one for... No, it's Kavya. I'm going to have to go and check on the rules, because I don't think you're allowed five uh, mercenaries right now. Let me go and check on that. Uh, announcements for right now. Mercenary rules are... Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, I'm looking at the wrong channel. Uh, mercenary rules. From 550 to 560, mercenaries are limited to three per player. Uh, in 650, he can have more. So I'm going to have to go and chat to our Egypt player. And honestly, very many players have got more than, than three. Um, like Egypt there should have only three. He's got five. We've got Babylon with one, two. We've got Parthia with three. Uh, we've got Iberia with three. Antigonids with three. Thrace with one, two. We've got three for Macedon. Uh, everything there seems to be in order. It just looks like it is um, just Egypt that is in violation of that rule. So one, two, three, four, five. Yes. All right, let's go and chat to Egypt for a moment. 
Oh, lots of battles there that I missed. Whoops. All right, we're going to go and find Egypt. Pharaoh Bjorn, I have pulled yeah. you away just temporarily. You can go back in a moment. Uh, you have too yeah. many mercenaries. I have too many mercenaries? Yes, you're only allowed three until 650. In 650, you can have five. Oh, okay, I thought about 600. Uh, which one should I delete? Whichever one you want. Uh, I, well, I don't, I don't yeah. care, just as long as you okay. have three as a maximum. There you go. Yeah, thanks. Sorry. No problem. Well, I mean, I lied. It is, it is a problem. Uh, but at the same time, I, I'm not going to do anything more than that. It's rectified. Blah. I'm not going to do a penalty. I don't care enough. It's not. I'm not tryharding that much at being a, a DM. <laughs> we're, we're happy to that he's just now not violating the rules. That, that makes me happy. That's all I need. So. Push by Maria. Will Boja have the strength to stop it? Because right now, we see they have marshaled a force of around about 200,000. If we add in everything we have here. 291,000. That is more than Maria is bringing to bear. 196,000. Boja is no longer outnumbered. And the manpower is really not as much of an issue as one would expect. So many people not reading the rules, though. Yeah, I know. I might give him a, a penalty between sessions, but I'm not going to do it in the middle of a session. I just cannot be fucked. They do it because Lambert is soft. How dare you be so rude and accurate. Um... But yeah, doesn't matter. Deficit for Boja. I mean, look at that. Negative 200 ducats. His army maintenance is huge. He's got full increased pay because he knows that the way that he loses is his morale is just nowhere near that of the Marians. Tech 5 versus Tech 13. Most of the advantage in that is morale. So yeah, getting that extra morale is very, very important. Looking at Mari's perspective, they're not doing too badly. They're losing money. Yes, that is accurate. But they're not losing nearly as much as Boja. Um, and uh, they're doing okay. I think there's going to be a battle, so I'm, I'm going to check on that again. I just want to have a look around. Um, it looks like Limen is not doing so hot. Uh, Babylon, let me just check. Is there a battle? There is not, but I think there is going to be one soon here too. You can just you can just taste it on the air. There will be a battle here. Um, Pissuria in the ascendancy, though. Hundred thousand Thracian warriors. Just that's dangerous, man. That's very very dangerous. All right. See you later, Greta. Thank you very much for uh, popping by the stream. Have fun at work. All right, Limen. Anything here? No. Right, Boja. I'm fairly sure there will be a battle very, very soon. As soon as this... Yeah, he's going straight in. He is going straight in with 144,000. Uh, he's going in first with the elephants, though he does not have very many of them. Only 17. What are the tech differences between Pissuria and Thrace? After this battle... Actually, you know what? We'll just do it quickly right now. Pissuria is on tech 6. We've got Thrace on tech 10. So, more morale for the Thracian. They're going in. This guy's going in. Elephants first, 23,000. The reinforcements from Maria are rushing in. Thing is, archers first, probably not a bad decision. The 144,000 is sticking back for just a moment. Oh, the losses on those archers is pure filth. It is pure filth. 